Welcome to the Roland Pro AV V600 UHD 4K HDR video switcher tutorial. My name is Justin, and in this video, we will cover input and output scaling, audio features, customizing the multi viewer, importing stills via USB memory and output capture, and lastly, memory preset functions. The V600 UHD is a 4K HDR professional video switcher designed for the realities of live production. Powerful input and output scaling, allowing you to output to an LED display controller at the exact pixel dimensions, reducing latency and the need for an additional scaler. A robust ROI or region of interest function that can turn a 4K source into multiple HD shots that can then be scaled back up to 4K. AUX video bus output assignment for a center screen or confidence monitor feed, support for HDR or high dynamic range video, and still image import and capture. The V600 UHD will automatically scale your input sources to match the system format. It features four HDMI inputs and two 12G SDI inputs across eight channels at resolutions up to 4K at 60 Hz. Three HDMI and one 12G SDI output allowing you to independently output 4K or HD video from the program, preview, or aux buses. Let's go over the scaling functions of the switcher. To adjust the scaling of an input, press the menu button and go to the input menu. Here, choose the assign slash scaling function, and then choose the scalar option for the input that you want to adjust. Here you can change the zoom, as well as the position and the scaling type of your source. By pushing the value knob in, I can then highlight the value that I want to adjust. And you can see that I can make an adjustment to video input one without adjusting the camera. Next, I'm going to show you the output scaling options. Press the menu button and go into system followed by processing. Here you can make adjustments to the zoom and position of the output video, as well as make corrections to the aspect ratio. You can also verify the status of an input signal by pressing the menu button and entering signal status. Here you can choose any source and get more information about the video that's being input into the switcher. I can also independently downconvert the video outputs. Press the menu button, go into the output menu, choose the output that you want to downconvert, and here you can see the downconversion is disabled for HDMI output 3. By enabling it, it's now outputting HD video instead of 4K. Next, let's go over the audio settings. First, I'm going to show you how to set up the audio delay. Press the menu button, enter the audio menu, and you can independently choose the input source that you want to adjust the audio delay for as well as the XLR inputs, as well as with the output. When you enter the menu, you'll see the first option is the delay option. You can use the value knob to set the increment in milliseconds. Remember, if you push and hold the value knob down while turning it, it'll turn it in a faster increment. You can do the same for the output level as well. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up audio follows video. Audio follows video is helpful if you only want audio from an embedded video source to be output when that source is active on program. To enable audio follows video for an embedded input, press the menu button and enter the audio menu. Choose the input that you want to enable it for, and then turn on the follow function. Now when that source is on program, it'll output audio, and when it's off program, it'll mute the audio. Last, I'm going to show you how to change the audio output knob assignment. Notice here there's an output knob in the audio section of the panel. Press the menu button, enter the audio menu, and go to output level slash delay. Here on the last option, you can change the output knob assignment to either be the main mix, audio out, or the headphones. Changing it to phones will give you headphone control using the output knob. Next, I'm going to show you how to customize the multi-viewer. Press the menu button, go to output, followed by multi-view, and here you can change the position of the program window, as well as the labels for program, preview, and the eight channels. Next, I'm going to show you how to import still images using a USB memory, as well as the output capture function on the switcher. To import a still image via USB, use the USB memory slot on the top of the V600 UHD. To load an image file off of the USB stick, press the menu button, and then go to System, 
still image memory load. Choose the memory slot that you want to save it to. Choose the file off the drive that you want to load. And then execute. Once it's completed, if the input is assigned to that still image, it'll display. You can see on the multi-viewer that a still image is loaded into input 7. If you press the menu button and go into the input menu, for the two still channels, you can access a still image memory from any of the eight slots. We only have a still image currently loaded into the first slot, and you can see that it appears on the input. You can also make adjustments to that input using the correction options in the menu. Another way to import still images is to use the output capture function. Press the menu button, go into the system menu, on page two, select output capture, choose the still image memory slot that you want to save the capture to, as well as the source bus that you want to take the image from. In this case, I'm going to set it to preview, and I'm going to put the presentation in preview. Once you execute, you'll have the still image in slot number two. You can also assign the output capture function to a user button. On the panel, you can see there are two user buttons with which you can map functions. To do that, press the menu button, enter the user menu, and assign a function to the user button. You can also change the LED color of the button, and it will mirror the output capture menu settings in the system menu. To demonstrate, I'm going to change the slide on my presentation and then press the user one button to show you the new capture. Last, we'll go over the memory preset function. This is an easy way to store and recall your settings on the switcher. On the panel, you'll see there are eight buttons for your memory slots, as well as banks that give you access to additional groups of eight presets and a store button. This teal button is our currently selected preset, and this blue button is another preset that's already been saved. If I change my settings, I can press the store button and save it to a new preset. Once it's saved, that becomes the currently loaded preset. To load a preset, simply press the preset that you want to change to. You can also store a preset in a different bank. Press the store button, followed by the bank button, and then choose the memory bank that you want to save to. Press the bank button to go back into that bank, and then choose the slot that you want to save to. I've now stored my settings in bank two, preset one. Thank you for watching this video on the Roland V600 UHD. For more information and additional support, please visit the Roland Pro AV website and be sure to check out the product knowledge base. <laughs>